Papa. How are you both doing? Good. All right, Kelly and Nina. All right. We're sitting here debating now, on what questions we were going to ask you. Yeah. <laughs> now, now well, here's the very lady. first question. Here's the very first question we're going to ask you. How do you pronounce your name? Because I have been messing it up all <laughs> night. <laughs> I have. I've been listening. Uh, it's Chapala. So we just say the first Ch- L is silent. Okay. Chapala. Chapala. Yeah. Chapala. Yes. All right. I'm saying it. Chapala. Boom. I got it. All right. You got it. So, uh, <laughs> all right. So, Miss Miss Chapala, can you tell yeah. people our listeners tonight um, what is your job title and what do you do as far as like what range of relationships and, and things of that nature that you uh you advocate and you take care of? Sure. Well, I am a dating and relationship coach and therapist. I'm licensed as a marriage and family therapist here in Illinois. And my practice, uh, Relationship Reality 312, is strictly focused on, like, love relationships. So I work with singles and couples, um, you know, young adults to people even in their 70s come in to see me. And a lot of it is about finding the right, like, you know, finding someone, finding love. Uh, A lot of my singles come to me. They want to know what they're doing wrong. A lot of my couples come to me um, because they want to know about, like, communication. Like, that's the biggest issue. I work with disconnection, um, helping people decide whether or not they want to stay or leave in their relationship. I do a lot of work with cheating, intimacy building, um, even some like depression and anxiety, yeah, premarital counseling. It's it's a lot of stuff. Mm. Oh, I like all that. Mm. Mm. Okay, all right. Well, we we well, I'm going to tell you right now, Anita, you're going to have your hands full tonight because people are definitely calling up and they're definitely going to have questions about all that. So, um, okay. Uh, well, let, let me ask you this. Um, well, uh, hold on. We're, we're already getting the calls in. Uh, let me go ahead and put Alana on. Alana, what's going on? Hey, how are you guys? Hey. Hi, Hi. Great. How are you? Good, okay. Good. Well, I'm going to give it give the floor to the ladies. Uh, who wants to ask the first question? Anybody? I okay, well, I guess all right. Oh, well, go ahead. Why does that why do so many guys kill the women after they leave? After the women leave? Yeah, like, you know, there's a lot of, uh, in Georgia, it's a high uh, domestic rate out here where it's uh, suicide murder. Mm-hmm. Is that strictly just based on ego or that's mine and nobody can have her or what? what, what I don't know. Yeah, I mean, my best guess, uh, I'm not like a forensic psychologist, but my best guess would be it kind of goes back to um, people want that one person. They want a connection with, you know, someone special. And so if that person leaves, they might have the mentality of, well, if I can't have them, then no one can. Mm. All right. Um, let me let me ask this question. So, is there a time frame um, as far as let's say you're you're in a relationship? Is there a certain time frame that a couple should consider getting married, or like what's what's the deal with marriage? Is marriage should marriage be a intricate part of a relationship down the line? Uh, I mean, you are talking to a licensed marriage and family therapist, so my bias is, um, you know, Uh, pro-marriage. But I do think think that marriage has a different level of commitment that just living together may not have. And so I'm definitely an advocate of, you know, marriage. And as far as a timeline, it really depends, um, you know, I think on the couple and a couple's, like, you know, experiences and individual experiences and age and things like that. But uh, research shows that as long as you're not in your teens and, like, really early 20s, like 21, um, I think it's up until, like, 21, like, you know, that that's a high risk for divorce if you get married that young. And so if you marry later, the chances of you staying together are better. And, um, and that's for, like, a timeline in terms of maybe, like, when to bring it up. 
uh, I mean, infatuation mm-hmm. lasts for on average about 18 months. And so mm-hmm. I generally recommend for people to you know, stay together long enough or have the kind of important conversations that they need to be having to truly understand what, what they're getting themselves into, you know, when they're dating someone. Now, what conversations are those? Like, give us an example of a conversation that you should so, have with your mate before marriage. Uh, a couple, like marriage. a main, sure, main ones are like conflict style. So how uh, someone handles conflict when it comes up and mm. compatibility issues. So oh. I talk with mm. my clients about things like, you know, is one neater than the other? Does one spend more money than the other person? Mm. Uh, even differences in like, you know, how you would raise your children, uh, sexual expression or sexual frequency comes up, uh, even, al- you know, drugs and alcohol, like if there's a difference between someone being more tolerant, you know, towards that than the other person. Because, uh, like, no matter who you're with, you're going to have, you know, these, uh, they're not, they don't necessarily have to be problems, but, you know, issues that you're not going to see eye to eye. And you don't have to necessarily be, you know, opposites, but you're going to have degrees of difference in, you know, a lot of these areas, no matter who you're with. And so I work with my clients on helping them navigate those to make sure that those differences don't end up, you know, like destroying their relationship down the road. Okay. Well, I'm great. Um, this is uh, Real Talk Radio Tuesdays. If you guys want to call up 646-200-3462, we have the relationship expert. I'm going to call her expert because she's giving very great advice right now. Miss Anita on right now, so you guys can ask any crazy. Chapala, Anita Chapala. <laughs> you got it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we got her on right now. Um, if you guys have any questions, you can call up and ask uh, any questions. Um, Alum, do you have a question? Um, let's see. Um, uh, what do you, let's see, how do I put that question? What do you <laughs> recommend um, for, like, long-distance relationships? Like, how long should they last or... Um, I don't know, like, how do you make those work? Yeah, I mean, I applaud people who are in long-distance relationships because I definitely would not be able to, you know, be in one. Uh, it, it honestly depends on the couple. Um, you know, if, if there's not really, like, a... I mean, obviously, like, the end goal is to be together, but it depends on individual differences. Like, how long do you think that you can handle being apart what is your plan for how often you're going to, like, see each other in person? Uh, how long um, or, like, how often will you be, um, like, let's say, texting or Skyping or FaceTiming or anything like that? Because some people don't necessarily need that kind of quality time, and they have no problem making, a, like, a long-distance relationship work. I personally have a friend who was in a long-distance relationship for about four years, and then he, you know, realized he had to make a decision, so he ended up getting married and relocating to where his now wife lives. Um, oh, but nice. they can work for they can work for some people, but not all. Hmm. Okay. Cool. Cool. Uh, I, let me ask this. Okay. In your professional opinion, do you think uh, when it comes to men and women? Do who who from your experience cheats the most? Uh, I would say men cheat more. <laughs> yes, we win. <laughs> You're uh, wrong, baby. <laughs> well, but it's not also. It's not well. It's not just my professional opinion, but you know the research that I've done on you know cheating. It's more men than women cheat. Uh, however, I think um, I read it was either like a, a study that women under, I think it's like 44 or something like that, are actually closing the gap on cheating. So they are mm. starting to cheat more frequently than, like, you know, with their uh, male counterparts. Hmm. But overall, okay. with the research, yeah, overall men definitely cheat more than women. Now, okay. uh, is that... Is that because they're jumping in relationships 
because they're really not ready and they're jumping relationships out of obligation because they don't want to lose that person or maybe because she had a baby? Could that be the main reason why? No. The, my experience, and again, just with the research that I've done, most people cheat, um, and I know this might sound crazy to some people, but most people cheat and they don't intend to do it. Um, there, mm. it's, it kind of starts out as like a, a step-by-step process. Like let's say mm-hmm. uh, cheating in the workplace is pretty common, so you mm-hmm. see a coworker in the break room, you start talking to them, and you, you know, over coffee or whatever and share about your weekend and then you you know meet up with them a few times and you start sharing more information like about your kids or you know about your life then you might start sharing about how unhappy you are in your relationship and then you you know move to lunch and then you have drinks Mm -hmm. after work and you share more and then you you know have uh dinner and then you know next thing you know you're in bed together and there are, th- like, three types of cheating. There's um, emotional cheating where mm-hmm. you do have that emotional connection and there might be chemistry, but you don't act on it. And then the physical, mm-hmm. obviously, um, however people want to define, uh, you know, physical cheating. Um, and then there's the combination of both. Mm-hmm. So my, and I, and I can in all honesty say, like, the I think 99% of the clients that I have worked with with cheating, they, like I constantly hear, I never thought I would be that person. I never thought I would cheat on my spouse or partner, you know, help me to understand why I did this. So it, it's mm-hmm. it's not intentional a lot of the time, at least with the clients that I've worked with. Hmm. Okay. All right. So when, like, one of the main arguments that we have on this show is that, you know, men – Cheat because they want to, and women cheat because how y'all put it? Women cheat because, or what? How y'all put it? Women don't intend to cheat or something like that. Um, is how accurate is that? That men cheat because they just want to, and women cheat uh, because they're missing something. Maybe a lack of a lack of love or. Or they're just tired of him yeah. cheating, or I don't know, something like that. Yeah, but I I think that uh, applies to both genders. Uh, I mm-hmm. because like when I I map out with all of my clients, okay, what? Why did you do what you do? How did you end up in this situation? And again, I mean, this is like my small clinical sample that I've worked with, like my clients. I can't speak for you know everyone who's cheated. But a lot of times there has been something missing in the relationship, and it's not just on the female part. You know, guys want love, and they want to feel cared for, and they want to feel connected, and they want to feel special to their, you know, partners just as much as women do. And so hmm. um, I I work – so I can't say that I agree with, like, men just do it because they want to. Um Now, I will say that, and I think this applies also to both genders, opportunity does play a role in whether or not people cheat. Like if, you know, someone continually, you know, flirts with you or throws themselves at you or you're on a business trip and you think your partner is never going to find out, like you have opportunities, you know, that are present that might increase the chances that you're going to cheat. And, um, I mean, I don't know what the research says on that, but I – as far as my clients, there's um, nothing that I see along gender lines that would differentiate between, you know, a man doing it more than a woman. Hmm. Well, thank you, Miss Miss Anita, for clearing that up because I felt the same <laughs> way. But you know, I could be wrong. Uh, <laughs> this is Real Talk Radio. If you guys want to call up six four six two zero zero three four six two, we got. Our expert, Miss Anita, on. We're going to take another call real quick. Got one of my hosts from a, a, another show, Body Count Radio. We have Nico in the building. Um, Yo. Nico, what's up? What's going hey. on? What's up? <laughs> what's up? Hey, hey, what's going on, Mom? Man, I'm just listening, you know, very interesting I stuff. I know you got some questions. Let's hear it. No. <laughs> 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 no, no, listen. I am just listening, taking notes. That is all. I'm not. <laughs> when a question arises, you know me. I'm just right now. It's very interesting. Though. I'm definitely just listening. 
Right, right. Okay, I got another um, question, Nita. Okay. Um, what is it with these guys say I'm not ready for relationship? What is that all about? Mm, I, I would believe so them. I, <laughs> I would hear that some guys say they don't know, like literally they don't know until it happens. And they say that every guy has its time, his his, his time, or I don't know. Can you help me understand that little man thing that's going on? Yeah, I mean, I, I definitely, after working with as many male clients as I have worked with, I honestly believe that timing is important. I do see it more prevalent on the male side when a guy says, I'm not ready. I think generally women are pretty open and they want a relationship. Uh, but I've mm-hmm. had, like, male clients who, you know, have said, like, they, you know, want to concentrate on their career and, um You know, some of them do want to play the field. They kind of just want to have some fun and, you know, sow their wild oats. Um, I've had some guys, like, and I think men in general, they do take their role as provider very seriously. And so Mm -hmm. if they're focusing on their career and making money, becoming financially stable, uh, sometimes they they just don't want that, um, you know, they're not looking for anything serious. And it's hard for women to understand because we take things pretty personally. Like we think, well, we're so awesome. Like how could you not want to be with me? But <laughs> I, know, I don't right? think a guy, a guy doesn't think that way, you know, and guys have an acknowledged yeah. like, yeah, Anita, I've been, you know, dating or I've been yeah. in a relationship with like awesome women, but I just, I wasn't ready for that. And no matter how awesome you are, you're not going to change a guy's mind. Like he does have to be ready for that and whatever that looks like for him. So when it, like when women say that, he says he's not ready, I'm like, believe him. Do not waste your time. You're not going to change his mind. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So either you're the time that he there, needs. And you're either going to support that or, like, okay, so it's better to take a man when he is ready. Because what I heard when, when a man is not ready, it's not like you're the problem. So even if he is playing the field, it's not like he's going to give somebody else a relationship. Meaning he's not ready means that if you leave him today and he going to meet the tips tomorrow, he's still not going to be ready. Is that right? Right. Yeah, I mean, it, it depends on the guy's, you know, timeline. But um, and, sometimes guys, like, become ready when their friends, you know, start getting married off and they're like, oh, I don't have, you know, people to party with anymore. You know, but everybody has their own thing. And, uh, I mean, I had a client who took care of um, his parents for about a decade, and he wasn't really dating during that time because all of his time and energy was focused on taking care of his parents. You know, and so even if he had met awesome women during that time, he wasn't in the, you know, the right mindset to be able to devote that time and energy to, you know, a woman. So I think a Mm. lot of times women... Women, like you said, take it personal. We feel like, well, maybe because I'm not that girl that looks like the right. girl he's in the club with, or maybe right. my boobs are sagging, or I'm too old, or you know, I don't have good enough sex, and it has nothing to do with that. It's all him, right? Yeah, yeah, timing. Yeah, definitely. And you know, I I could even speak for this from a woman's perspective because. You know, I mean, I am an entrepreneur, and I knew I wanted, I mean, I tell people I want to build an empire, but I, you know, when I was working on my career and, you know, going to school and building my, you know, brand and my practice, like, I didn't really care about dating too much. I mean, I went out with, you know, some nice guys, but that's not where my, you know, mind was. And so I think timing does matter for, uh, you know, both sexes, but I definitely see it more prevalent with men. Okay. That is very, very uh, interesting. Let me ask this, and if anybody else has questions, why? Because um, we got a few more minutes with Anita. If anybody has mm-hmm. any questions, you can just chime in. Um, but let me ask this, Anita. How, I, I guess, detrimental is sex in a relationship, like in a building relationship? Like, if can sex mess up the relationship if it's too early yeah. or okay um i mean i think sex i think sex is instrumental absolutely um can it mess mm-hmm. up sex if it's too early also yes um 
So with sex, when people sleep together, they become attached, whether they think that or not. And studies have shown that you can fall in love with the people that you're sleeping with. So the problem with that mm-hmm. is that even though sex, like you, you might have great sex, you may not have what it, like what the what your relationship needs. Like maybe you are, you know, too incompatible, or your um, styles of communication are, you know, mismatched. There are other things, you know, to look for because I've never heard anyone say that their like a good relationship or their great marriage has been built on, you know, great sex. I mean, it's an important part of it, but it definitely can't be the foundation. And so I think people who hook up, um, even casually, have to be very careful because with the hormones that are secreted, especially with uh, oxytocin, it's known as the cuddle hormone, it creates, you know, attachment to the person that you're sleeping with. So you do have to be very careful. But, you know, in a like an actual relationship, the plus side of that is that it's, you know, it creates that feeling connected, you know, with your with your partner, which is obviously, you know, great to have. Okay. Good, good. So, right, is it, um, it, I also heard that when men have sex, it's easier for them to just, like, like you said, if they're not ready and they're just, like, you know, what do you say, um, sow their royal wild oats or whatever, that... Mm-hmm. They can, they can, if they're ready, they can drop people overnight. But girls, it's harder because we're more emotionally attached, even if it is like a booty call or, you know, a one-time date. How, is that, am I wrong or what's going on? Um, I'm trying to think of like my clients. I think the thing is that we, I do think women get more attached but it's whether or not, um, you know, we sleep with a guy or not. Because I know some of my clients will just meet a guy and be obsessed with why he's not asking her out on a date, you know. Um, Mm -hmm. But, you know, we also, I think we have to look at it a little bit more globally that, you know, women I think are, it's more acceptable for us to be emotional or express our emotions and guys aren't. So, I I don't buy that guys aren't affected by it. I just don't think they show it or they don't acknowledge it to themselves. Because men are really good at compartmentalizing, you know, kind of like the out of sight, out of mind, or I'm not, I'm going to put in, you know, an area of my, you know, brain and not deal with it. Um, and so mm-hmm. I think we're both emotional sexes, but, you know, the disadvantage for men is that expressing emotion is, you know, so not viewed as, you know, something that's, a strength versus a weakness. So is it true that, I don't know if that when, your is it true that when they that when they're ready to settle down that they can actually just cut everybody off like overnight? What do you mean, like cut off uh, past? Like relationships? if they were like, yeah, well, yeah, like you know they had like a date here or somebody online and you know just all these little flirtation things that they had going on their little wild oats you know, sessions, and then they just wake up one day and they're like, you know what, I'm ready to get married, and they could like literally just cut girls off because it's easier for them to not have emotional attachment like women. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't know if I could speak to that, you know, like in general terms. I, I guess it might depend because, I mean, they might still keep some of these women as friends or they may still have them in their life until they actually meet someone. So I don't know if it's necessarily like they wake up one day and like, okay, I'm ready, Uh, but they might, you know, meet someone and that like they do realize that they're ready and they meet that person that they've, you know, quote unquote been looking for and then Mm -hmm. might break off, you know, the past relationships or sometimes just, you know, keep them as friends. Is that possible? Can you keep a friend after you already had sex with them? Uh, I mean, my my bias, just given the amount of work uh, on cheating that I work with my clients on, is I advocate not to have those kind of relationships in your life uh, yes. just because, you know, I think that they're a threat to the relationship. Yes. So, or, yeah, totally or there agree. has to be, yeah, or there has to be 100% transparency with that um with your partner about that person, you know, but 
it's it's just a, I, I, in my opinion, I think it's a risk to keep someone you know in your life that you've slept with while you're in a relationship. Mm. That's, that's a good that's point. That's a great answer. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, once again, this is Real Talk. I mean, Real Talk Radio Tuesdays. If you guys want to call up six four six two zero zero three four six two, hit the one button. If you have a question for our relationship expert, Ms. Anita. Um, one of my other questions was this, okay. So, I mean, we're in this new age of, uh, and I'm, I'm just getting your opinion on this. This is not necessarily like an end-all, be-all question. But as far as dating a woman or, or you date being in a dating situation, do you think as far as, you know, going out with women or going out with the opposite sex, is it, just natural nowadays for the woman, not like the man has to approach the woman. Is it okay, in your opinion, for the woman to approach the man and actually ask him out or, you know, do uh, uh, actually want to take him out to dinner or something like that? Um, I think that um – it's definitely okay for women to approach a guy because I've heard from a lot of my male clients just how scared of rejection they are. And so they might Uh see a woman that they find attractive, but they won't approach her because they think she would, you know, not um, talk to him. And then like women think that, well, if a guy really was interested in me or if he really, you know, thought I was cute or attractive, then he would approach me. I'm like, it's not that okay. simple. So I definitely think it's, and I even encourage my female clients to, you know, approach men if, you know, they want to. Uh, I'm on the fence about whether or not women should ask a guy out. Um, I mean, it has happened mm-hmm. and, it's, you know, it's worked. But uh, mm-hmm. I do think that, um, I, mean, I don't know, do you, would you want a woman to ask you out? I mean, I think, you know, it's, mm-hmm. I think most of the men still want, you know, to do the asking. But I think if, as long as a woman lets him, like, gives enough signals that she's interested, uh, I think a guy would be able to, you know, ask her out. Okay. Cool, cool. Um, here's, a, here's one more question. I, I'm just, I'm, I guess I'm full of the questions. Uh, you know, I know twin <laughs> Uh, um, I, I guess what my question uh, is a two-part question. In your experience, what do you feel like? Is, what do you feel like are are the the woman's biggest insecurities in a relationship and the man's insecurities in a relationship? What's what's the biggest one that you've encountered? Um, I think for men, I think men take their um, like role as you know making their woman happy like very seriously and are you saying like in a relationship right mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. I think so I think men feeling like a failure is their biggest insecurity um, that I've mm-hmm. you know seen so if they feel like they can't do anything right or nothing I do is good enough or you know I can't ever make her happy um, that's a mm-hmm. common one that I see for men and I think for women, I think it's about, um, you know, they're insecure about how, I don't know if it's like. Our bodies. Uh, well, I think that that's like a symptom of it. But I think ultimately the, the core issue is that she doesn't feel cared for or like not cared for enough, you know, by her man. So she might make a, you know, she might focus on her body, but again, that's, just a symptom of like, well, maybe if I was thinner, uh, then he would, you know, show me that he loved me more or something like that. Because mm. I just oh. hear from a lot, like a, a, a lot of times women will just say, Anita, if he cared about me, he would blah, blah, blah. You know, like it, it, mm-hmm. it just right. seems to center around the caring. Mm-hmm. Right. The, like you said, the communication, because I think that, Sometimes women assume we know what the men did and how they hurt our feelings, or we assume they know what we want instead of opening up and saying, hey, I didn't like that, or you made me feel, you know, like she was better than me because of this. Because guys really don't Mm -hmm. know. 
<laughs> like they really don't. Yeah. Yeah, and and yeah. that's a that's also a common one. It's like the mind reading. Like again, women think, well, you know, if he really cared about me, he would know that, you know, and then you know, insert X, Y, and Z, and I. I mean, the beauty of dating and being in a relationship with someone is learning about these things. And so, you know, when you first start out, you absolutely have to be vocal in a nice way. You know, I'm not saying to be demanding because that won't work, but saying, hey, you know, I know you haven't known me that long, but this is something that's important to me, or this is something that makes me feel special, or this is something that I really need in this relationship. Or, yes, my feelings were hurt when this happened. Absolutely. But, um, you know, I just think, like, we change, you know, through time and in relationships. And being able to communicate that in a gentle way is extremely important. Well, Anita, here's my pet peeve. And, and correct me if I'm wrong, I'm pretty sure you experience this, experience this a lot. <laughs> uh, my pet peeve is this. And I think this is probably in maybe like 85% of the relationships. I feel like when when a couple get together, I, I, I have this thing that I call the three-month rule. And what I, what I say is in three months, you can pretty much tell if you can be with somebody or not, or you're going to be with somebody or not. Um, Wrong. And the reason, why, the reason why I say that is because I feel like when – People start off together, they start off in the honeymoon phase. Like, I mean, the right. first couple of weeks or a month, they're just like, you, you know, the person, you could be like, oh, I like to watch action movies. And, and you're, the person you're dating be like, oh, I love action movies. So everything right, right. coincides. But after you've been with a person for a while, it seems like they get comfortable in a relationship and they change. Is that mm-hmm. something that just happens consistently, is that something that you have to deal with consistently in your line of work, or is it not as big as I'm thinking? Uh, but people changing in what way? Like, we okay, say me and you are dating, and the first month, everything I like, you like, everything I like, everything you like, I like. Right. So, so around, you know, the third month or whatever, it's like, well, you know, when in the first month when we were we were going to eat a restaurant and you had no problem with it, the third month is like, okay, well I don't want to eat there. Or <laughs> if you you get me accustomed to cooking, like let's say you cook every Sunday, and after third month it's just like I don't feel like cooking on Sunday anymore. <laughs> like, is that something that naturally yeah. happens all the time? I mean, I I do think it does uh, because, like, when, you know, some of my couples, when they feel disconnected, I'll ask them, like, tell me what you were doing when you first started dating. And then I'll ask them, how many of those things are you still doing? And, you know, they, like, that light bulb goes off and they're like, okay, I get it. Um, I mean, I do think infatuation, you know, the honeymoon phase, it, it lasts on average about 18 months. Uh, But it could be as little as, you know, three months, and sometimes that's when those relationships kind of crash and burn. Um, Mm. But, I mean, in the beginning, you do want to be liked, right, especially if you like someone. Um, And I think around, like, three months it is when, like, patterns start to emerge, and then around six months is when people, like, really start feeling kind of comfortable with each other where they're, like, some of that, infatuation has faded and they're probably more like themselves. Um, But I would like, if someone's changed or maybe like not putting in, you know, the effort, that would be something to, you know, speak up about, you know, Hey, remember when you used to make, you know, dinner on Sundays, like that really meant a lot to me, you know, can we start that up again or can I help you? You know, it, it, it was something like a time that I looked forward to, you know, spending with you. Or if not every Sunday, then every other, and then, you know, we could go out to eat. Um, yeah. yeah. Okay. I mean, I would just say, you know, again, a conversation, you know, about expectations, you know, is important. I don't think people, like, drastically change uh, for the most part, like in, you know, within three to six months, I don't think it's drastic, but if you do notice mm-hmm. a difference, you definitely want to mention it. 
Okay. All right. Well, Real Talk Radio, once again, if you guys want to call up, 646-200-3462, press 1 button. We're about to let Miss Anita go in a second. So, uh, also, if you follow me on Facebook or Twitter or anything, you have a question that you want me to ask her, you might be a little nervous to ask, go ahead and hit me uh, on in Facebook or on Twitter. Or, you know, if you got my number, text me. I ask her. Um, <laughs> so, um, one other question. Oh, before um, I ask my question, Twin, um, Alana, did y'all have other questions? No, I don't have any questions. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, um, another question that I have for you is, is as far as when when you're in a relationship and it it gets dry, you know, you still love the person or you still care about the person, you still want to be with the person, but it gets dry. What are some things that you would suggest to spice up the relationship or, you know, bedroom or, you know, whatever? What what would you suggest? But I'm sorry, I didn't hear the word. The relationship is what? Uh, if the relationship dry. is getting dry. Like oh, boring. got it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, I am a huge advocate of couples being intentional. You know, uh, I think there's, you know, people out there um, who think that, like, love should just last and a relationship should just work uh, itself <laughs> out. Um, you know, without any effort. And so that takes, again, active involvement on the part of both partners. It's like, um, uh, you know, and people sometimes think that they need to come up with, like, you know, new sex positions or, you know, new lingerie to spice things up, which I'm not saying, you know, doesn't help. Uh, but mm-hmm. really going and, like, going back and saying, like, hey, how connected do we feel to each other? You know, do we feel like that we're special? Do we feel that we can rely on each other? Do we feel that, you know, that we're there for each other, that we um, are, in, you know, in tune and all of that? Um, and then, like, everything else is just kind of, like, extra because that's the foundation. Mm-hmm. So if you need to, like, I do believe in novelty, like trying something different can definitely elevate mood and can bring uh you know, people make make them feel closer together. The best example of that is the show like The Bachelor and The Bachelorette. Like all they do is these like novel things and then they wonder why people fall in love so quickly. Um, So there is some truth to that. You know, like Hmm. come up with a list of, you know, what's our bucket list or what do we, um, what have we always wanted to do and we haven't or what are things that we, you know, keep talking about? Um, what are things that we used to do when we were dating that we really enjoyed that we stopped doing? Like all of those things, um, you know, can definitely help. Because the, the problem is that like with novelty sometimes is people think like they always have to do something new in order to get that. But there's only so mm-hmm. many like new things, you know, um, to do like in your relationship. I mean, I think it's like that yeah. connection that's the foundation and will definitely help with that feeling. Mm. Okay. I've got a question for uh, you. Um, does, how, okay, when guys bring up the whole swinging thing, you know, what is that all about? And is that safe to trust and to do that? Or will that break up your relationship? Um, I, I don't know. I mean, I've worked with, just, I mean, again, my sample is so small, like, um, just because I'm, even though I work with sex issues, I'm not a certified sex therapist. Um, Mm -hmm. Like, I've worked with a small sample where people have tried to have, like, an open relationship, and I have never seen it successfully done. So, Mm -hmm. you know, if a guy's asking for that, you know, you might want to ask him why, you know, why is this important to you? Is this the kind of, you know, uh, like, sexual... Um, kind of like, is this the kind of sex that you want in a relationship? Is this what you're looking for? Is this what you need? And then if that's not your thing, then obviously you're not compatible in a very core area. Or would you mm. would you suggest doing it before you got in a relationship with the person and definitely before you got married? Uh, like I mean, I'm a guiding, a, dating thing? I'm a little bit on the conservative side, so I would just, you know... <laughs> I'm not an advocate of that. <laughs> yeah, but to each their own. 
I mean, again, I just I if some people do it, you know, and it works for them, right. but if it, it doesn't work for you, then you know, don't do it. Crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Um, are you there? Hello? Hello? Yeah, I can't hear anything. Can you hear me? I can hear you, Hello? yes. Oh, okay, I don't know what that noise is. Okay, I got another question for you. Um, if if I'm in a relationship and you no, know, I've been seeing a guy for maybe over a year. What is it with the? Is there a time limit on how they can say, you know, do I love you, or is there something wrong if they don't say it that I don't, you know, that I love you, or do they feel funny about it, or? Uh, I mean, I have worked with women who um, have been dating a guy for over a year and he hasn't said it yet. And, Mm -hmm. I mean, I can tell you that there definitely is a reason. Um, Like one, uh, a couple of my clients, like I think the guys have had, um, you know, they've already been either engaged or they thought that the woman they were dating was the one. And so it might be like a self-protection mode where they don't want to say it unless they're sure that the woman is going to be, you know, the one for them. Um, because again, I mean, I know it's hard not to take it personally. You know, you could think like, what's wrong with me? Why don't you love me? Or why can't you say it? Um, I had another client where she just happened to be dating a guy who wasn't verbally expressive, you know, so him saying those words was a little difficult, but I mean, everyone has their own timeline and if it, you know, bothers you, then bring it, you know, you can bring it up again in a gentle way, but, you know, just asking like, you know, how do you feel about me or are we are we heading in a good direction or, you know, however you want to phrase it that makes you feel comfortable. Basically more just man problem, not the woman problem. Um, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I, I've had a handful of clients where that has happened and it's been the woman waiting for the man to say it. I think, um, like, research says that a man says, I love you first, but I think it's because the woman just waits until he says it. <laughs> um, That's interesting. Here's, here's, here's one of my last questions. And um, my question is this. Uh, you know, I, I had a couple people hit me up. And, um, you know, it, it, mainly people are concerned about the cheating aspect of things, so just a uh, double back on the cheating aspect of things. Sure. Do you think cheating is grounds for automatic breakup? Do you think it's that should be it? Like if if, if no. your mate cheats, okay. Um, is that really? I, why, I yeah, mean, yeah, I you, think. You cut me off um, <laughs> okay. Well, I mean, I think if. Uh, obviously context matters. Uh, if you're in a relationship but not married, um, I mean, you want to know, is this a history? Is this like a pattern? Is this the first time it's happened? Again, wanting to know why it happened. Like I would I would probably make um, uh, uh, going to therapy uh, a deal breaker. Like if the person who cheated doesn't go to therapy to figure it out, then I would recommend breaking up because, uh, like going through cheating and dealing with the hurt and the pain that that has caused is so tough. It is so difficult um, for couples to heal through that. Uh, in a marriage, you know, there's that, again, that extra level of commitment and, you know, especially if there are kids involved. Uh, I just want to reassure people that um, you can successfully heal from cheating, you know, after it's happened. Um, and I've worked with clients who haven't been married and they've been able to um, effectively, you know, repair from the cheating and they're even, you know, getting married. Um, and I've worked with a lot of marriages, you know, with, where there's been cheating. And they and I, I tell my clients, I'm like, I could make your marriage better than when you first got married. And, you know, they tell me, like, you have. So, um, yeah. 
it can be rebuilt. But again, it's if if you believe that most people don't intend to do it and they kind of fall into it or they don't know how to speak up for what they need, you know, and they're meeting their needs with this other person, you know, then that's really important information to know and work through. Um, are there, uh, you know, people who chronically cheat? Yes, but that is a minority. Like I personally, just based on my experiences, I don't believe once a cheater, always a cheater. I don't believe that. I think that's mm. a myth. And research doesn't support that either. Oh, wow. That's good. Okay. That's good to clear some stuff up. Right. So, um, so when... T- when, um, when um, women, you know how they get with the man, and you know the, some women have this thing where, girl, if he gonna do this to you, then he's not the one, and they're just expecting you to be in a relationship with this perfect guy that like has everything together and nothing ever happens. You guys don't argue, and they assume that that's the one for you. You know how like you got girlfriends that that tell you that. Do you do you follow your heart more than you, you know, would listen to statistics or them, or how would you handle that? Um, I mean, sometimes I tell my clients not to listen to their friends um, mm-hmm. just because people have their own experiences and they bring that bias. Um, and, I mean, again, like what I like what I love about what I do is that I don't give, you know, tools or information based on my own experiences. I have, you know, studied, I've gotten a master's and a license and continually go to, you know, professional development uh, classes and workshops and read, I read so much just about this so that, and it's from the experts, it's not, you know, just any fluff that's on the internet. And so, um, in my own experiences, you know, that if someone cheats on you, yeah, there is a high probability or there is a probability that they might do it again, but you also have to look at the variables that led to that and increasing awareness about how cheating happens to, like, avoid it or to prevent it from happening. Because I really do think you can prevent it. But most people, they think, like, oh, I would never cheat. And then, like I said, you know, they're in my office thinking, Anita, I never thought I would do this to the person I love the most. I'm like, well, you know, I'm not surprised. (laughs) So I would rather you go to a, you know, a, a marriage counselor and talk to them about it versus listening to your friends. I mean, I know, like, and I'm not trying to bash your friends. I mean, I know they have your best interests in, you know, in mind. You know, I just, like, my experience just talking to people in general about cheating, so, like, even outside of my office, just when I, you know, when people find out what I do for a living, they ask me, you know, a ton of questions. And that is a hot topic. And, you know, when I just talk to them a little bit about it, they're like, oh, I didn't know this. So I just think we need to educate mm-hmm. ourselves more about, you know, how it happens and how to prevent it. Wow. Well, Miss Anita, I know you got to go. I know I kept you over the time that I that we, we <laughs> <Okay>. talked about. <laughs> but no, this, this was super fun. A, yeah, I was just about to suggest, like, we might have to bring you back for a, a round two. Yeah, uh, we do. <laughs> we do. I'm sorry, we do. Yeah. All right, yeah, yeah sounds good. Have, Leave those she's questions. She's better than psychics. Yeah, I have so <laughs> many other questions that I wanted to ask you. But, you know, we'll save it for another show because that definitely could work out for another show. Uh, the last okay. question, but this is the last question. This is the last question. Now, when you're in a relationship, you yourself, we're, we're going to get personal for a second. You yourself in a relationship, okay. do you find it, is, is it almost like a cheat code for you because you you're – you're in the business of helping people in relationships. So if a guy starts to act a certain way, you already know what this is and how to deal with it or if you should pull back from it. What? How does that work when you're in a relationship? Uh, well, uh, it would be interesting what my boyfriend would have to say about it. Um, but it is, sometimes, uh, it is sometimes a struggle for me. Um, like people think that therapists like overanalyze and, you know, can read people's minds and that's not um, the way I approach it. But um, Mm -hmm. I definitely practice what I preach. Like what I teach my clients, Mm -hmm. I practice, you know, in my own relationship with my boyfriend. And so, um, yeah, I mean, otherwise I'd be, you know, the biggest hypocrite. (laughs) Uh, Mm -hmm. But you know, any kind of tools that I give or the kind of, um, you know, tips or advice, uh, I definitely implement it with him. 
Boom. Now, that's that's what I was going to ask, because is it, is, it's kind of, to me, it would be funny because I, I know he, he knows what you do. So it's like if you guys get into, like, a little spat, he's like, I need to stop stop trying to cycle, uh, analyze me. And, and uh, so, yeah, just, just curious. You know, every everything ain't perfect. So, well, uh, Anita, if you would, please let the people know where they can follow you at. I already follow her. Um, on her social media, but I'm going to let her give that out. Um, I need to tell a few where they can follow you at and, you know, if they need relationship advice or sure. how, how can uh, they get in contact with you. Yeah, absolutely. So my Twitter is at RR312, and my Facebook, um, I have a business page, which is um, the backslash Relationship Reality 312. And then if they want to follow um, my public posts um, on Facebook, they could also just um, my name, Anita Chapala. And then my um, website is relationshipreality312.com. Mm-hmm. I think those are the big ones, right? Facebook and Twitter. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and just in case you guys need to, because I had trouble spelling her name, so I don't have a problem spelling it for you, it's Anita Chapala, C H L I P A L A. Uh, you can type that in the search engine, and it'll pull it right up. And you go ahead and like her page, and you can get the links to the three one two, uh, the relationship uh, reality relationship three one two, and all the other good yeah. stuff. And I also have uh, an Ask Anita contact form on my website, so if people have any questions, and you know they can reference you know, the radio show, and I could address the questions the next time, you know, we have a conversation. Boom. Yes, that there is you great. guys go. Real Talk Radio. You guys at Real Talk Radio and then at Anita uh, uh, question page, then, you know, she'll go ahead and, and take care of you guys. So there you guys go. Um, we're awesome. just going to say this is part one of the Anita Tapala interview. So... <laughs> Uh, <laughs> we're definitely going to have her back on. Anita, thank you so, so very much for coming through and blessing us with some knowledge and probably touching a, a few people's relationships out there and helping them out. So thank you so very, so very much. Well, thank you so much. Yeah, thank you for the opportunity. Not a problem. Um, and uh, I'll definitely get with you tomorrow and get you the link and everything. So uh, if you need to use that for your website or anything, you definitely can. Okay, great. Thank you so much. Thanks, Anita. Thanks.